Several years ago, I built a table, called it a 3D printer stand, and a lot of people watched the video, and then I put a resin printer on it, which turned the entire table into a complete resin-covered crap hole. Therefore, my FDM printer needs a real 3D printer stand. So let's start this process off by taking a look at the final dimensions of the stand. Now I'm building this project from my Ultimaker 3, and therefore that reflects my particular dimensions of this stand. If you've got a different printer, well, you're going to have different final dimensions. As a material choice, as well as some of the design aspects of this stand, it's based around pretty much what materials I have laying around my shop that are extra stuff. In this case, most of the structural components are going to be half-inch birch plywood. Let's get started by building the sides of this 3D printer stand. Now, if you only need to occasionally cut large sheets of plywood, you can look at getting something like this instead of a full-blown track saw. This is the Craig AccuCut, but other companies make similar products as well. It's a track system where your circular saw mounts onto a sled and can get you fairly straight cuts. With the sides clamped up, let's talk a little bit about the base and the printer shelf. Now they're very similar dimensions, these two pieces. However, everything is sitting on the base, but the printer shelf itself is going to slide in between the two walls. Therefore, it's going to be a little bit narrower than the base by a distance equal to two times the width of your side material. Because I'm using half inch plywood for my sides, therefore my shelf is going to be one inch narrower than the base. And just like the sides though, I am going to be using half inch plywood to build these two pieces. Here we are looking at the inside of one of the sides of the 3D printer stand. And I'm going to be adding on some scrap material here as a support for the shelf that holds the 3D printer up. But the question is, where exactly is this going to go? Now in a little bit we're going to be building a lid for this whole stand. And I want to have this area of the side be a bit of a lip that holds the lid in place so they can't fall off. Well, make it hard to fall off anyway. So what I want here is maybe about a half inch of material or so to act as that lip. And then on top of that, I've got a half inch thick plywood for the shelf itself. Therefore, this support piece needs to go somewhere about an inch or so down. For the assembly here, I'm using a combination of glue and one and a quarter inch screws. Of course, for the shelf supports, since there's some sort of two by material, I got to get a little bit creative there and drill in a large pilot hole before I go ahead and insert the screw. So now we're moving on to the lid, and at the end of the day, this 3D printer stand is going to live here in the wood shop, and of course, sawdust and 3D printers, well, they really don't like each other. So the main purpose of this lid is going to be to keep sawdust off the printer when it's just kind of sitting around. And if you're wondering why I'd be moving a 3D printer into a wood shop, well, it turns out if you have a wood shop anywhere in your basement, your entire basement is a wood shop, and even where the 3D printers are right now, they get a nice dusting of sawdust pretty much every time I'm down here building furniture, which is a problem, hence why I'm trying to solve that. Now the question comes in, can you use this lid as a heated enclosure? And the answer is, I'm not going to do that. I don't need that feature for the Ultimaker. Uh, you're welcome to try and see if it works for your 3D printer. I'm not sure. I'm not designing it for that purpose. The front of the lid here is going to be made from quarter inch polycarbonate. The reason for that is I have a panel left over from when I bought the old Motor City Combat something arena, I don't know what it's called. Motor City Massacre guys, Michigan Combat Robot Association, whatever. When I bought their little arena, there was a quarter inch polycarbonate panel there that's no longer safe for robotic combat. Actually, when I'm thinking of it, there's part of the arena right back there. <laughs> and so I'm going to repurpose it for that, for this lid here. Now the sides are going to be more quarter inch plywood, and the back is going to end up being half inch 
birch plywood, and then I'm going to brace these sides together. How about we get started? All right, that looks pretty good. What you saw me add there just a moment ago was an extra scrap piece of material along the back of the printer shelf, which prevents the top lid here from kind of hinging on these two roof supports, because what was happening is the back would kind of slide in that way and would cause the top here to kind of just, I guess, rotate up and look, well, it didn't do anything. It you know, defeated the purpose of the top of the lid. So this is looking pretty good right here. I got my two-piece lid ready to go. So a few 3D printing tests later, and I had to make one important modification to the top of my stand here. Originally, there was two of these 2 by 3 supporting the roof. This one right here is interfering with the Bowden tubes during printing, making awful noises. So I had to remove that one, but this one back here is just fine by itself. The original plan for the stand was down here in the storage area to have this some sort of mounting system so I could put larger 3D printed spools down here and they would run up through the shelf and into the printer itself. However, it turns out that the extruders on the Ultimaker don't have enough strength to pull up and rotate these large spools of plastic. So therefore, I'm going to move them to the back of the printer. So I've already got one built right here as an example. I'm going to build a second one in case I ever want to run two of these large printer spools at once. So let's talk a little bit how the spool axis system is built. Now I've got a 5 16th inch machine hex bolt or something like that right here. It's a little bit longer than the width of the spool and it's 5 16th inches because I'm working with some pieces from a 5 16th inch hardware knob kit that I bought a few years ago. Now I've got a piece of electrical conduit that's going to slide over this thing. It's going to let the spool rotate a little bit smoother. And this particular diameter of electrical conduit by sheer dumb luck happens to have an inner diameter that matches the outer diameter of this knob right here. So I can go ahead and I'll tighten this thing on. So I've got a different 5 16th inch bolt right here. And I've got the electrical conduit a little bit shorter now because it's a shorter bolt. And then the idea is the bolt kit slides on here. It kind of locks the conduit in place and it's going to serve as a bit of an axle for the whole thing to rotate around. And this knob here is going to hold the spool from falling off. And with that, we can call this project done. And as a bonus, there's no resin in this area. It's not going to become a resin crap hole. So thank you guys all for watching. I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield. If you like 3D printing, I'll drop some 3D printing terrain video somewhere around here. You can watch the next one if you're interested. Otherwise, I'll see you guys all next time.